Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com with some basic science for climate alarmists. After decades of telling us that global warming meant the end of snow, now climate alarmists say that snow and cold are extreme weather caused by global warming. The Environmental Defense Fund says extreme weather gets a boost from climate change. Scientists are detecting a stronger link between the planet's warming and its changing weather patterns. The Environmental Protection Agency says that global warming is changing the frequency, intensity, and duration of extreme weather events. These changes are due to the buildup of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere, meaning the burning of fossil fuels. The argument made is that global warming increases the amount of energy in the atmosphere, which leads to more extreme weather events. We've heard the propaganda, so now let's look at the actual science. Why is it that birds can sit on a high voltage electric line and not get electrocuted? There's lots of energy being transported through that wire, but it doesn't seem to bother the birds. On the other hand, if you got on a ladder and touched those same electric lines, there's a good chance you would die. And the reason is because there's a large energy difference between the power line and the ground. What drives the flow of energy isn't the amount of energy in the system, but rather the difference in energy between one place and another. The birds are sitting on a high voltage power line, but they're not touching anything which is at a lower voltage. If you have a battery sitting on the table, it's not releasing any energy. In order to get the battery to release energy, you have to make a connection between the positive end of the battery and the negative end. And the more batteries you have lined up end-to-end, -end, the faster the energy is going to flow. If you have four 1.5 volt batteries lined up end-to-end, -end, that's 6 volts difference between one end and the other. But if there's no connection between the 6 volt end of the stack of batteries and the negative end, there's not going to be any electricity flowing. Energy flow is controlled by the difference in energy, not the absolute energy. Here's Wiley Coyote preparing to try to throw a rock on the Roadrunner at the bottom of the cliff. The rock has usable potential energy because it's on the edge of a cliff. There's a large potential energy difference between the rock at the top of the cliff and the rock at the bottom of it. What makes the rock useful as a weapon is the fact that it's on the edge of a cliff. But these rocks at Stonehenge don't have any useful potential energy because they're sitting in the middle of the Salisbury Plain. Without a nearby cliff, the rocks have no usable potential energy. Once again, energy flow is driven by differences in energy rather than the amount of absolute energy. And it's exactly the same thing with weather. Most extreme weather occurs during the winter and spring, not during the summer when the atmosphere has more energy. A few years ago, the always reliable Guardian tried to blame a tornado during May on climate change. And the article included this map showing the extreme weather at the edge of a cold front. What causes the extreme weather in the tornadoes is cold, dry air colliding with warm, moist air. The extreme weather is driven by differences in energy in front of the cold front and behind it. Without the cold Arctic air coming down, you wouldn't get the extreme weather. If the Arctic was actually overheating, as climate alarmists claim, we would expect to see less extreme weather, not more. Less cold air in the Arctic would mean fewer and less intense cold fronts, so we would have less extreme weather. You might remember that Toto got caught in this tornado with Dorothy in 1939. Toto doesn't believe that extreme weather is getting worse. One of the fundamental tenets of global warming theory is that the Arctic will warm much faster than lower latitudes. This would mean fewer cold fronts, less intense cold fronts, and less extreme weather. If the poles warmed up to the same temperature as the equator, Earth would have no weather at all. Reality is that strong to violent tornadoes in the United States peaked 50 years ago and have been declining ever since. And 2018 was the first year with no violent tornadoes in the United States. Climate alarmists claim that global warming is making hurricane impacts worse in the United States. But six years ago, the Washington Post was terrified by the record lack of hurricanes in the United States. 
They complain that a major hurricane hasn't hit the U.S. Gulf or East Coast in more than a decade. So according to climate alarmists, global warming makes hurricanes worse and it also makes them better. Reality is that major hurricane frequency around the world has declined sharply over the last 30 years. Eight of the 25 deadliest Atlantic hurricanes occurred around the time of the Revolutionary War, which was during the Little Ice Age. I suspect that George Washington and his troops would have disagreed that Earth was overheating around the year 1776. Hurricanes are driven by the difference in energy between the tropics and the poles. Hurricanes are nature's way of moving heat from the tropics to the polar regions. The reality is that climate academics don't seem to understand the very basics of science and the very basics of energy flow. But Toto is a very patient dog and he's going to continue to try to educate the participants in the climate scam. You can visit Toto, Kyrie, Caesar, Toki, Upala, and the four new puppies on the web at realclimatescience.com.